Hi, this is Jacob Avila of 5 Minutes Tono, and this is how you scan a AAA. Your probe of choice for this exam is going to be the curvilinear probe. It's really the best one, it's the one that's going to give you the best image. If all you have is a phase array probe, it'll work as well, but if you can choose between the two, I would choose the curvilinear. When you're placing the probe on the patient, you want to put it in the epigastrum with a probe marker facing over to this patient's right, and you want to scan down until you get to the bifurcation of the aorta into the iliacs. Now there's three things that I want you to know before we go on, and that is the fact that if it's greater than three centimeters, it's considered abnormal. If you have greater than five centimeters with hypotension, that's ruptured AAA until proven otherwise. And one of the most important things is you always got to make sure to measure the outer wall to the outer wall. Here's a still image of the aorta. We have aorta on the right side, the IVC on the left, and our vertebral body was shadowed underneath that. And you'll see as I kind of roll this through, you want to follow it all the way down until right there uh, when it splits into the iliac. So you want to evaluate as much of the aorta as you can. When I'm doing this scan, I pretty much only do a transverse exam. You can do a longitudinal, but I just like the transverse better, and this is why. Most of the aortas that we see are not going to look like this. They're not going to be nice and straight and narrow. Most of our aortas that we're going to be evaluating for pathology are going to look a lot more like this. Very curvy, very tortuous, and trying to get a good longitudinal image is going to be very difficult, if not impossible. Now this is what an abnormal aorta looks like. It's important to understand here that the lumen and the outer wall to outer wall are not the exact same measurement. If we only measured the inner lumen, we would say, hey, this is two centimeters, this is not quite a uh, AAA, but we gotta make sure to measure the outer wall to outer wall, and we'll see that this seven centimeters is definitely an abnormal finding. This is probably the biggest AAA I've ever seen. It was about 12 centimeters in diameter, and it went all the way down into the iliac uh, arteries right there. Ultrasound isn't great at seeing if the AAA is ruptured or not. Sometimes you might be able to see free fluid in the abdomen due to rupture AAA, but at that point your patient is probably really, really sick. The reason for this is that these will preferentially rupture into the retroperitoneum, and the retroperitoneum is a smaller space, which actually helps to tamp on the blood. So if it's getting out into the peritoneum, it's just free-flowing aorta blood into the peritoneum, and it's bad. But here with this image, you can see a little bit of extravasated blood right there. Even though they're much less common, be able to identify saccular aneurysm as well. This is what that'll look like. So you have your aorta kind of tortuous path right here, and then you have this little nubbin right here, and that's a saccular aortic aneurysm. Here's another image of it. Another thing that we can detect with ultrasound but we're not really good at is a dissection. So it's a good specific test for it, but it's not sensitive, which means that if you see a dissection, you have a dissection. But if you don't see a dissection, it doesn't mean that you don't have a dissection. So to recap, your probe of choice is going to be the curvilinear probe. You want to know that greater than 3 centimeters is considered abnormal, but greater than 5 centimeters is really what you would consider bad. Make sure that you measure the outer wall to outer wall, not the inner lumen. Please check out our two sites, 5minutesound.com and ultrasoundoftheweek.com. And if you have any questions, you can email me or send me a tweet.